Greetings, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. Here I am in Hammersmith, London. You can see old Father Thames uh, flowing sedately behind me and Hammersmith Bridge, which is now closed to motor vehicles because they can't take the weight. Well, opposite that I should be filming that when I'm going to now talk about a man who was not too keen on the Industrial Revolution. Um, I'm here by the riverbank because very close to the house where um, William Morris lived. And here it is behind me. So William Morris House, as it's known, we'll go and take a closer look in a minute. So William Morris is a man who deserves uh, to be very better good, known. He's largely forgotten, apart from in Hammersmith. He was born in 1834 in Walthamstow. Now that's now considered part of London, but back then it was uh, in the countryside in Essex, that county just outside, um, just outside London to the northeast. And his father was an affluent uh, financier. So um, he grew up in a very well-to-do family. They had a number of houses. They were all large and uh, amply staffed with servants. So he was a very uh, bookish boy. Uh, he went to uh, Marlborough College. And uh, bear in mind, he's born only nine years after the invention of the train. Um, so he remembered the countryside when um, the fastest thing was a galloping horse and it was very quiet. And uh, through his lifetime, he saw the, uh, the sort of lifestyle he liked being eroded. And he felt the Industrial Revolution had brought noise, filth, just inhumanity, and people being treated as, as objects as uh, you know, things of just simply of financial worth or else having no worth uh, felt led to a lot of exploitation um, and just ruined the natural world. So he appreciated natural beauty and thought we should do more to preserve it. So he went to Exeter College, Oxford, um, where of course Latin and Greek was, was the main set of the curriculum, but uh, he also became uh, conversant in uh, Old Norse. So he's best known as an essayist, um, a translator, of Old Norse uh, literature, uh, as well as a novelist, like The News From Nowhere perhaps being his most celebrated uh, work. Um, so he cultivated a long beard, even though that was unpopular in the late 19th century. And um, from his distaste for, for capitalist exploitation and this uh, lack of appreciation of the natural world, he, he became more political and gradually he became a socialist and that was a very new thing in this country and uh, particularly controversial for someone of his, uh, of his social background. Uh, and he helped found the Social Democratic Federation. So he had this perhaps quixotic idea that uh, the, the, the United Kingdom could return to medievalism. He disliked the feudal system as he saw for what it was, the aristocracy lording every, everybody else and um, simply demanding uh, unpaid labor. So he thought that that was semi-servitude. But he thought of the kind of small self-governing um, communes of, um, uh, of farmers, that was the way forward. It's part of the art, art, art and crafts movement, rejecting manufacturing, saying things should be made with our hands because so often um, the production line was beginning to take over. Well, it was really, of course, Henry Ford who founded that, but machines were starting to make things and he wanted handicrafts to be promoted. Um, he was on the fringes of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, friends with uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti and a number of them, the Birmingham set. And uh, in the 19th century, it was a time when people were very um, nostalgic about uh, the Middle Ages and felt that uh, chivalric ideals were being trampled in the mud. This is when Lord Tennyson um, penned Mort D'Arthur. You can go to the Oxford Union, which is the debating society of Oxford University, go to the library, which was formerly the debating chamber, and you'll see on the walls there how the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, they painted these marvelous colorful murals uh, to, to illustrate Mort D'Arthur by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Um, so that was very much um, his uh, shtick, saying, let's return to nature. We don't like these um, uh, entrepreneurial nasties taking over, charging the max, paying the minimum, and uh, polluting the countryside. So I suppose it's a bit of a head of, ahead of his time, in a sense, being into ecology. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Social Democratic Federation is really a precursor of the Labour Party. And some people who were in the SDF later went on went to found the Labour Party. So William Morris died in 1896. So, um, and the um, Labour Party as such didn't exist back then. It was really the Labour Representation Committee, which was a um, subsection of the Liberal Party. So um, William Morris, he's often confused with uh, 
William Morris, Viscount Nuffield. So there are two men named William Morris associated with the Oxford University and their, and their lifetimes overlapped. So Viscount Nuffield, to avoid confusion I'll call it that, was born in 1877. He's the car manufacturer, as in the Morris Oxford or the Morris Minor, and he was ennobled as, as Lord Nuffield. So Lord Nuffield never went to Oxford University, but he was a generous donor to the university. Hence there's Nuffield College as part of Oxford University. So um, the, the two men, one is the socialist artist and the other one is the car manufacturer. Okay, but I'm talking about William Morris, who was not Viscount Nuffield. I'm talking about the uh, idealistic uh, socialist um, artist and so on. So uh, go in here to, you can see this where the headquarters of Hammersmith Socialist Society and there are obviously displays about the man himself, but they're regular, they're talks on various um, uh, socialist themes. So it wasn't revolutionary socialist, um, though he was au fait with Marxism, somewhat attracted to Marx's ideas, um, but uh, he didn't necessarily want to over overthrow the state, he was more into it withering away and being atomized and people voluntarily cooperating and not just caring about profit and loss and uh, living in a brotherly manner. So um, uh, perhaps very unrealistic, well it certainly didn't come to pass. That's William Morris.